Okay, we are live. So it's Monday morning. Let's uh, let's shortly get into a little look at some of the levels that we are seeing across the board. Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, yeah, we certainly did. Had a lovely weekend. First weekend at home for ages, and it was just nice to be at home, sort a few things out at home, and I've just bought a ski erg, which some of you may or may not know, um, is a torture device to help you get fit for skiing. Uh, so yeah, I've been using that. Was on that this morning, and uh, first few goes are not fun, but I'm sure it will uh, help my skiing as we get further into the winter. So enough of that. Let's go and have a little look at what is going on, because as I've said in the title, there are some uh, key levels. Now I wouldn't necessarily say we're at major levels, so I wouldn't be looking across all of the markets and say we're at major levels, but there are some key levels for us and potentially the way we trade. So we'll start as we normally do and have a little look at the uh, the Dow and the DAX, because it's all, uh, the Dow and the DAX, the S&P and the Dow. So you can see here I've got a daily chart of the Dow and I'm going to flick to a daily chart of the S&P. So although they're not the same, um, you can see that there is a fair bit of confluence going on where we've had this this long term upward trend this fairly fairly major trend line broken and then you can see here s p has given us that new low on the daily that was lower than the last higher low so we broke the trend consolidated and had that break that was primarily off of the the evergrand issue but as you can see the market has rallied a lot of people have obviously bought the dip uh, and the market has rallied but at the moment just doing some simple analysis we are approximately we're just over the 50% mark. We'll just put a fib on there so we can just get an idea. Now, this isn't some fib trade that I'm doing. I'm just to show you where we are. So as you can see, we came up and we are hovering around that daily 21 on the S&P. And you can see we've done 61.8% retrace, retracement. If we were to push on and get above these highs, I would be much more confident of a retest of the prior highs. I'm looking at where we are now to see what happens here. Now, this is important. You can see that we've had this trend line break. We've moved down with no um, with no resistance level here. Now, yes, this is a new lower low and it's lower than the last higher low. But and this is the big but if we go up to the weekly chart, as I've talked about previously, at the moment, the weekly chart is just showing a reaction to the weekly 21. Now, yes, that is the first time we've seen that for a long while. And that was a little bit of a sell off relative to previous times. The last sell off that we had that was that big was probably around this area here back in uh, the start of the year, possibly going back a little bit further. And then obviously you've got COVID there. So at the moment, what we're saying in terms of key levels is at the moment, the weekly 21 is holding up. If we go back to the daily, the daily 21 is holding up. And if I compare the Dow, slightly different on the Dow, if I look at the weekly chart on the Dow, you can see the weekly chart on the Dow. Yes, we got that new lower low, but again, we went way past the weekly 21, but we reacted and we've come all the way back up. So we're sitting in this little this little gap. So it's not so much key support and resistance levels on these. It's more, again, look, we're, we're sitting in there. So you can see the Dow at the moment hovering around its daily 21. So for me at the moment, I'm watching this. Now, this particular pattern where we get a trend line break, um, and a clear new low, obviously, if it was a long setup, a clear new high and a pullback into this area here. This is a setup that we that we trade and we trade this across multiple markets. However, with the Dow and the S&P, what we don't have is a resistance level up here. Now, what you'll notice on the Dow, there is a slowing down. Obviously, we stopped. We didn't make a new high. The MACD is, is tailing off. I wouldn't say there's strong divergence there. Uh, the weekly chart, you can see there's a bit of trending divergence. Price has gone higher. The MACD has come down. But for me, that doesn't signify a sell. Look, there's a flat MACD on the S&P. And if I go down to the daily, you can see, say, really, no really divergence there. Now, even if there was strong divergence, for me, divergence is only relative if I've got a previous resistance or support that price is coming into, because that's the methodology that we test. So this is more about recognizing a potential pattern and seeing what happens here. So at the moment, what I'm looking for is to see what short term today, tomorrow, and probably Wednesday's candle brings into play and to see whether or not price holds up here or wants to go that little bit further. So if we push that little bit further and get above this level, I'd be more confident on both the down the S&P of a retest of these highs. If we come down into this zone here, then I'd be looking for retests at these prior lows. If we get 
those retests. Don't forget that the retest of those lows are the candles on the weekly that uh, that went down and went and reacted to that weekly 21. So if we get that, then as I've said previous times before, I would be looking for a retest of the weekly 50s on both of these scenarios. So if we can come back down, get below these little these little minor support, I'd be looking for at least tests of those weekly 50s. So at the moment, yeah, key key kind of moving average levels there, not kind of key moving average levels for us watching what price does over the coming days. DAX, you can see here, DAX, a little bit of a reaction here. You can see we've had the price come in. Again, no real highs or lows here, but DAX in a similar similar position, a little bit more sideways than the S&P in a doubt, but similar position. We've obviously had the election there and that's maybe creates a bit of volatility over the next couple of days. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, the French index, similar scenario. Now the French index did have the prior highs up here. And as you can see, the price is sitting in that little gap just there. So again, all these indexes behaving in a very similar way. Uh, so yeah, key moving average points on these and watching those over the next couple of days. Gonna have a quick look at oil because oil is coming into key levels. Some of our guys had a lovely, or are still in a momentum trade here. So the guys that uh, are in our swing trading room, okay, I don't trade the momentum setups, I trade the trend line break and the reversal setups, but a lot of our guys will be in the momentum trade here on oil. I know a few of them moved their stop to break even when it got up to the prior highs and got up to the one for one area here. So they'll be looking to either trail their stop or take profits before we get up to the significant level here. So the key level on oil, and this is the futures chart, the key level on oil, if I go back up to the weekly chart here, is the 2018 highs that you can see here. And if I just drag the chart a little bit further back, so I'm going to go up to the monthly because it's quicker. You can see that those key levels that you can see from 2018, if you roll those back, that prior resistance highs there was support lows from back in 2011, 2012. So we've had a test of that. So for me, it's really key now to see what price does. Does it get back up, retest those highs? I'll just get rid of those so you can see it more clearly. So does it get back up, retest those highs? If it does, then I will be looking for shorts because we're back in the against the trend area that I would consider shorts. So our guys that are trading momentum setups, they'll be looking to exit or tighten up their stops when they get up to this high. Price may go higher. If it goes higher, then if they're out the trade at those highs, they'll look to get back in if price proves itself and wants to go higher. Or if they're trailing stops and price goes higher, they may get stopped out because there may be a reaction here. I will be looking for a reaction and then our potential reversal setups at that level there. But we're not there yet, but that is it. So the key level for us on oil is a retest of the July highs because that takes us all the way back to the 2018 highs just there. If we go and have a look at euro, so we were seeing, we were looking to see whether or not euro would get a rollover because obviously we've had a retest of this little, I wouldn't say strong area of support, but we've got this little area here. We've got the, the previous lows of the year, came back down slightly lower. At the moment, we're just sitting in this gap. So the challenge with, with Euro is there isn't a clear one point level here. You've got these lows that we're looking at here, and then you've got the lows here. So for me with Euro, I'd be taking a slightly more cautious approach. And if I was momentum trading this, I would want price to get below not just these recent levels, but here. Obviously, if you were intraday, that little gap there could offer you some opportunities, but I would want Euro from a swing point of view to be below these levels. In terms of a move to the upside, well, we're not really getting a clear bounce at the moment. So if I go back to the daily and just have a look at this, you're yeah, not getting really getting a clear bounce. There would have to be a fair bit of work before price could give me an opportunity for a trade in this area here. So for me, not a lot happening with, with Euro, fairly neutral here, but for any further downside, some well, strong downside, you would want this key, this key area here. So again, not a strong level, but a key area. If price can get below this, then there's plenty of room for further downside there. Quick look at the pound. Let's go back and have a look at that. Where are we with the pound? So again, not at a key level, but putting plenty of pressure. Can't really make its mind up here. We've come down. We've got the 2017 
2000 sorry 2018 highs this area of resistance that we got close to you can see it there uh, got close to didn't actually get hit we've come back down and again the pound consolidating here so we've had this short-term move we've broken that and again pound can't make its mind up so stuck literally sat on that weekly 50 moving average if we look at that from the daily perspective you can see there's that consolidation there so for the pound a little bit like euro but in a slightly different position for me if we can take these lows out then there's potential downside and further downside below that point there but if we don't and we don't get below then for me there's not really a lot going on here it's a bit neutral price would have to get back up and retest the highs and this is partly from our why from a swing trading point of view we trade a lot of cross pairs and trade both indices commodities as well because other trading opportunities will will prevail which i'm going to about to when i finish with you guys i'll be going in to do that with our swing traders because we've still got quite a bit going on on various different cross pairs so yeah focal point in terms of majors for me will be a retest of oil of these highs and then i'd look for potentially look for again the trend setups but price would have to fulfill a certain set of criteria to do that s p and the dow it's all about what price is going to do we've reacted to those weekly weekly 21 moving averages we're now sat back up we've retraced back up at the daily so are we going to go higher push back and retest the highs or are we going to roll back over from here all right so i'll be back in touch with you again later this week we've got some interesting videos i'm going to be doing some coaching insights as well so stay tuned and also wednesday i am doing a free webinar so free webinar on uh yeah wednesday night 7 p.m uk time if you are listening to this and you're not a member of trader support club you need to sign up as a free member go to tradersupportclub.com click on any of the start right now buttons and sign up and then you can register for the free webinar and i'm going to be doing some live coaching there as well good good hope you're all well and thanks for watching i'll touch base with you again very soon